Hey guys, we're doing an experiment today involving all of these jeans and also my jeans. Huh? Huh? Come on, that's good. You know that's good. So I wanted to discuss a few things with you guys today in this video. Obviously it's a Thursday, so I'm answering a viewer question. If you have a question for me, definitely send it to askfranny at gmail.com and maybe I'll be making a dedicated video for your question. The question that the viewer sent in was about torsos. I have never really considered my torso. I always assumed that my legs were long because my arms are long, but today I think I've discovered something that shocked me. In this video, we'll be testing out denim rises because I think I have jeans for every version of rise. So that's what I'll be discussing today. And in that experiment, I'll be answering your question about torsos and proportions and how to know if you're really a flamboyant gamine. So hopefully what I'm doing today will be helpful to you if you're feeling a little bit stuck with your kibby body typing journey. Yeah, hopefully we can just clear some confusion that's in the air and let you know a few things to consider when you're thinking about what rise of gene would work best for you. So I recently watched an Ally Art video about weight gain for all of the body types. She reads directly from Metamorphosis, and so if you're ever wondering, like, what did Kibby actually say in his book, she's, like, going through and, like, reading it, which is, I think, really helpful. Well, I was fascinated because the ways that she described the Yang dominant types gaining weight um, is very similar to how I gain weight. This is a weird season for me because I've recently found that I've kind of thickened out in my hip area and my butt and my butt <laughs> so my midsection is a little bit like bloated seeming to me because i'm not used to that so my jeans don't all fit the same way that they used to my kind of bean shape is accentuated because of that of course i still am i am still pretty flat up top my arms are still really skinny the legs themselves are still really skinny so i've just kind of put on a little bit of thickness around my midsection there and it's kind of thrown me off when it comes to picking the right denim for myself and knowing what my size is going to be because I have such a difference now between my smallest point, which is my waist, and my widest point, which is now my hips. It was confusing to me initially because I was like, I've never had curves. Does this mean that I'm soft gamine now that I've gained a little bit of weight in my hips? Or can I still be flamboyant gamine if I have a level of curves to myself? And so as I was sitting and kind of thinking about it, came to this conclusion, your body type doesn't really change. Your weight can change and fluctuate, and that happens all the time, but my bones are the same. When I thought about it, I kind of felt around my hip region and found my bones, and my hip bones, my pelvic bones, which are the same thing. <laughs> you know what? They're still really narrow. Like, my bones are still tiny and delicate and very, very narrow. The way that I gain weight in my flesh, you know, isn't kind of everywhere. I feel like if you're a soft gamine, the way you would gain weight would be different than a flamboyant gamine because the flesh that sits on top of your bones is different. But then also I was like, oh, well, does that mean I'm curvy now? Within my proportions, I might feel a little bit more curvy, but I don't think that's what the yin curves are like. I'm curvier because I'm a woman, but they're not yin curves because obviously dramatic types can have curves. Flamboyant naturals, they can have curves, but it's a different kind of curve than a yin curve. And you can see this if you look at a picture of like Beyonce or Marilyn Monroe and how they have like a rounded hip region, whereas the yang curves tend to kind of look almost angular, almost trapezoidal with a little bit of like to them, almost like a, a parentheses or a, a bracket or something. And those are the kind of curves that I have. So that kind of reassured me that I was still yang leaning in my bones, even if I was gaining curves, it doesn't mean that my whole type has changed. But it has changed the way that I purchase my pants. And so I think that there's like a bit of um, tension around flamboyant gamines are always like straight in their figure and 
Um, they're always, you know, kind of scrawny and live. But then if you look at yourself and you're resonating with this idea that, oh yeah, I'm definitely flamboyant gamine. Oh, please, oh, you made me lose my spot in my notes. Here's my buddy. Say hey yo. Okay, go on your merry way. But anyway, just because I have gained a little bit of curvature does not mean I've lost my yang leaningness because that is still the undercurrent of my my body and my bones. But this is what's helped me remember that I'm flamboyant gamine more than soft gamine. You know, I'm already narrowed down in the gamine category, but um, deciphering between soft and flamboyant can be a little bit tricky. But regardless of this realization, I still had to buy a pair of curvy denim for my body. That's something that really shook me. The curvy styles, I never have to worry about waist gapping, you know, that gapping that kind of happens in the back because the way it fits your thighs is different than the way it fits your waist. But when you get a curvy style, they keep that in mind and so you end up getting a piece of clothing that actually will cinch at your waist just in the way that it's designed, which I think is really smart. I'm actually gonna try on all of my denim pieces in this video. I only have like five pairs of denim jeans and then a pair, like a pair of shorts as well. What is the most flattering for my torso to leg ratio? Which brings us to the viewer question of the day. She's wondering, after doing the Kibbe test, after sitting with herself and like kind of evaluating her yin-yang balance and what she sees in her body, she settled on flamboyant gamine. In the middle of all of that, there's some doubt that crept in that made her feel like, well, flamboyant gamines are supposed to have long legs and long arms, and I have kind of medium arms and short legs, so what do I do? And I, these are the kinds of clothes I end up having to buy for my body, and you know, these are the kinds of pants that I have to look for. So it turns out she just has a longer torso, but she resonates with the flamboyant gamine. She's asking, I was wondering if there is something else that would be helpful to consider in getting clear on what type I really am and being able to put things together, literally, given the length of my torso. So here's what makes you flamboyant gamine, just as a refresher. It's a mixture of extremes of yin and yang, nothing even in even proportion or balanced within your body um, is the way that I like to look at it. If you're flamboyant gamine, then you're gonna have a little bit extra yang extremes in your body, which can come through in a lot of different ways. And these combinations of yin and yang can actually show up in various ways as well, because it's about an overall balance, not a specific set of features. If that makes sense. There are flamboyant gamines who are, you know, kind of thicker and stockier, a little more muscular. There are some flamboyant gamines who are more lithe and um, narrow and lanky. Flamboyant gamines are always shorter. I believe the cutoff is like five foot five with a little bit of wiggle room. I wouldn't necessarily cancel yourself out if you're maybe like five six, um, but if you're like five ten, five eleven, even five eight, like you're probably not flamboyant gamine. I've never taken a really hard stance on that before, but today, after reading a lot and doing a lot of research, it just makes sense that flamboyant gamines really can't be that much taller than 5'5". Five five. The lines that are called for and that your body calls for when you're taller are different than the lines your body calls for when you're shorter and when you're, um, when you're flamboyant gamine, like wearing a cropped pair of pants and a cropped shirt it's gonna look very different on somebody who's a dramatic type or a flamboyant natural, more tall, than somebody who is a gamine, soft gamine. So for me, I think that shows up really clearly with torso and leg combinations because you're either gonna have, um, in my opinion, you're gonna have a long torso with short legs or a short torso with long legs. You're gonna have that opposite because you're gonna have that part of you that makes you a little bit taller, but then all of a sudden you're smaller. Or that part of you that makes you a little bit longer, but all of a sudden you're a little bit, you know, smaller and shorter. You know what I'm trying to say? If you stacked up two long lines, then that would make you extra long. <laughs> but if you stack up a long line and a short line, it's gonna shrink your proportion while still breaking up the line. And so within the flamboyant gamine family, you can have a long torso and short legs, or you can have short torso with long legs. Really just, depends on where your yin and yang are showing up. So it can really vary within and 
Um, you just have to kind of see for yourself where is the extra yang or where is the extra yin, and that'll help you kind of narrow things down, I hope. Okay, let's talk about jeans. These are my highest rise. They go above my belly button. They're wide leg jeans as well. Right now, I feel like these are my most flattering jeans. I really do love them the most. I get the most wear out of them out of all of my pants these days just because they fit my waist perfectly and they just make me feel so cute and so fashionable. In my last video when I talked about fall fashion, I mentioned these jeans and how these are the curvy jeans that I picked up from Madewell. I really feel like they accentuate the yin in my figure and the smallness that's there. And I just feel like that's really a flattering and beautiful look for my proportions. You guys know I prefer a high rise because I like to accentuate my smallest point and I love to accentuate the that kind of trapezoidal hip shape that I have without drawing too much attention to how skinny my legs are. And I feel like these jeans really do that for me. My next pair are also a pretty high rise. You've seen these before if you have seen any of my summer styling videos. These are my denim cutoff jeans. They came from a pair of skinny jeans that I thrifted from Plato's Closet. I cut them because I needed a pair of shorts and I felt like they were more flattering as shorts than as skinny jeans because I ended up cutting them right around where my uh, hips hit their widest width and so basically I just made them that trapezoid that I'm talking about pretty often in this video. These are a really flattering shape for my body and they make my butt look good so you know what more can you want. This next pair is a slim straight style from Cezanne. They don't have this style anymore unfortunately but they still have a lot of really beautiful denim styles on their website so definitely check that out if you're curious yeah these jeans were my go-to for a while i feel like they are also a high enough rise they go above my belly button if i pull it up high enough but they kind of fall down because unfortunately they don't fit my waist they fit my hips and in fact they're a little bit too tight on my hips now but when i first got them they you know, fit my legs really, really well. They fit my hips well, but they never fit my waist. And you can even see that little gap there in the front. Yeah, you can kind of see what this does to my shape. You can see where that trapezoid line breaks at the bottom and turns back into my skinny legs when the clock strikes 12. I don't wear these jeans as often as I once did. This next pair of jeans is Wild Fable. That's the brand. They're technically Target jeans, but I picked them up from Plato's Closet because I was in a pinch and I needed a pair of black jeans. I like wearing these. They're kind of a mid-rise. They hit at my widest point in my belly though, right below my belly button, where I start to feel a little bit more puffy. I tend to wear these jeans just to create like a monochrome look but it doesn't really break in the most flattering point for me so I try not to wear it as a color block as often. You can see also the way that it comes inward at my legs and accentuates how skinny the legs are but how wide the hip area is. That's not really the look I'm going for these days. I think that my body is beautiful and I'm not really trying to hate on it at all, but I also want to wear clothes that make me feel good, that fit my body well, and those just really aren't it for me right now. <laughs> but I still wear them, obviously. I'm not really getting rid of anything at the moment, which is going to lead perfectly into this next portion where I still have a pair of low rise jeans and they feel like low rise on me. I think they were technically mid rise when I got them, but since my torso is pretty long apparently, um, they hit below my belly button. You can see that unflattering shape that it creates when I turn to the side. I feel like it makes my hips look good, my butt look good, but my midsection, I don't really feel like it flatters it that well. You can kind of see the space and how like far away my smallest point is from the end point of the jean. And I just find that compared to especially the first pair of jeans, the wide leg, the super high rise, these ones aren't as flattering and you can kind of see, you can kind of see that. 
But yeah, you can see how my flesh is a little bit hanging over on the sides there. It's just not my favorite look to wear with the shirt tucked in. But I love wearing these jeans with something a little more oversized, something that goes below my widest point, like a dad sweater um, or a big t-shirt. So I think these jeans definitely still have a purpose in my wardrobe, but they are not my ideal pair of denim. Before I made this video, I thought that I had a short torso and long legs. After making this video, I don't know for sure. I feel like visually, my legs are short. Like visually, because of where the line breaks, my legs look much smaller. So I feel like after making this video, my torso is actually long and my legs are short. But tell me what you think in the comments because my eyes might be deceiving me from like staring at myself for so long. So let me know what you think. I've tried to have my camera as level as possible not doing any sort of tricks to make myself look different than I look. So if you can see, let me know if you think that my legs are short or if you think my legs are long. I'm kind of realizing they might be shorter than I thought. And so it just goes to show that, you know, certain pieces of clothing really bring out your yin and your yang. When I wear skinny jeans, like my angularity is really brought out. But when I wear a more wide leg silhouette, then my softness is really brought out. And my curves. I just find that so interesting and I hope that you could see that your body proportions really do affect the way your clothes are gonna fit you. Wow you guys okay I think that's everything I wanted to share with you today. I hope this answers your question kind of clears up some ideas that you might be having about soft gamine versus flamboyant gamine or just like how I experience the world as a flamboyant gamine and experience clothes and things like that. And I would love to have this video be a conversation starter in the comments. I don't claim to know everything. I'm learning just like you are. And so when I hear your side of the story and get your insight, that just makes my opinion and my knowledge much more well-rounded and um, it's Libra season now so I need the balance, I need the perspectives, I'm ready to receive it all. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoy your day. You are a wonderful person and I cherish the time that you choose to spend with me here on the internet. If you want to hang out with me more during the week, of course you can follow me on Instagram. I always post stories over there and I post in my feed just about every day. And I've recently started doing reels, which is super fun. I love making like transition videos. And so if you are into that, definitely go follow me over there at Authentic Franny. And all my social medias are linked in the description. So check that out down below. And I will talk to you in the next one. Love you guys. Bye.